Welcome to the Centre for Anesthesia podcast series. In this podcast, we'll be discussing some of the basics of acid-base physiology and having a look at how to interpret an arterial blood gas. There are several ways to define what an acid is, but you'll often hear acids described as a substance which is capable of donating a hydrogen ion to another substance. The substance that is capable of accepting the hydrogen ion is known as the conjugate base. This is the bronsted lowry definition of an acid, and is probably the most common way of thinking about acids within medicine. Measuring the amount of hydrogen ions in a solution gives us an idea of how acidic the solution is. The normal concentration of hydrogen ions in the plasma is around 40 nanomoles per litre. In clinical practice, we tend to use pH as the measure of hydrogen ions, rather than the actual concentration itself. The hydrogen ion concentration can be mathematically converted to pH by taking the negative logarithm to the base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. This means that a hydrogen ion concentration of 40 nanomoles per litre is equivalent to pH 7.4. This can be confusing, but the key points to remember are as hydrogen ion concentration increases, i.e. more acidic, the pH decreases, and that a small change in pH may mean a big change in hydrogen ion concentration. This is because the pH scale is not linear. For example, a change in pH from 7.4 to 7.0 means that the hydrogen ion concentration has gone from 40 nanomoles per litre to 100 nanomoles per litre. This is a 250% increase. The body produces acid as a byproduct of basal metabolism. So that we maintain a balanced environment, we either need to excrete or metabolise the acid that is produced. In general, we can think of acids in two ways. Respiratory acid, carbon dioxide or CO2, is formed as the end product of the metabolism of carbohydrates and fats. Although CO2 is not an acid in itself, when combined with water, it forms carbonic acid, which is capable of dissociating into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. We produce a lot of CO2 during a 24-hour period. Unfortunately, we have a very efficient system, the lungs, to excrete it. Because this acid can be excreted via the lungs, it's also known as volatile acid. The production of respiratory acid is far greater than the production of fixed acid. Fixed acids. These are acids that are not able to be excreted by the lungs. Because they can't be excreted into the atmosphere, they are said to be fixed in the body. Examples of fixed acids include lactic acids and keto acids, which result from incomplete metabolism of carbohydrates, fats and proteins. These acids must be excreted via the kidney. The amount of acid produced by the body is highly dependent on metabolic activity and can vary widely during a 24-hour period. Large changes in the acidity of body organs can cause them to become dysfunctional or even fail completely. The body has therefore developed mechanisms which allow it to respond to sudden changes in acid-base status. The main defence mechanisms against a change in acidity are buffers, respiratory compensation and renal compensation. A buffer is a substance in solution which minimises changes in pH. There is a vast capacity for buffering within the body and it is the fastest acting system to prevent a change in pH. Examples of buffers in the blood include bicarbonate, haemoglobin and plasma proteins. The respiratory system is also able to compensate for changes in pH. Carbon dioxide is acidic in solution, so by excreting more from the lungs, it is possible to render the body more alkaline. This system is controlled by the central and peripheral chemoreceptors, which, on detecting a more acidic environment, cause an increase in respiratory rate to blow off more CO2 and return the pH to normal. This is also a rapidly acting system, but takes more time to normalise the pH than the buffer system. The kidneys are able to alter blood pH by two mechanisms. They reabsorb filtered bicarbonate, which is alkaline, and they are also able to excrete hydrogen ions. The action of the kidneys is vital to maintaining a normal pH, but is much slower than the buffers or respiratory system at responding to acute changes in pH. Knowing a patient's acid-base status 
can give an insight into the underlying diagnosis and also give an indication of the severity of the illness. We get this information by taking an arterial blood gas. These can seem confusing as there is a lot of information produced on an ABG report, but by using a stepwise approach you should be able to interpret them. First, have a look at the pH. Normal is 7.35 to 7.45. If lower than this, then the patient is acidotic. If higher, then they're alkalotic. Write this next to the pH. Next, have a look at the pCO2. This is a measure of the dissolved carbon dioxide in plasma. When it's high, above 6 kilopascals, this is compatible with acidosis, and when low, less than 4.5 kilopascals, this is compatible with alkalosis. Again, write this next to the pCO2. Have a look at the bicarbonate. A normal bicarbonate is between 22 and 26 millimoles per litre. If it's below 22, then it's compatible with an acidosis, and if it's above 26, then this is compatible with an alkalosis. Write this next to the bicarbonate value. Next, match either the pCO2 or the bicarbonate with the pH. For example, if the pH is acidotic and the pCO2 is acidotic, then the primary disorder is being caused by the respiratory system, and this is a respiratory acidosis. Similarly, if the pH is alkalotic and the bicarbonate is high, then the primary cause is a metabolic alkalosis. Finally, look for evidence of metabolic or respiratory compensation. Does the pCO2 or bicarbonate go in the opposite direction of the pH? For example, an acidic pH with a low bicarbonate and a low pCO2 implies that the primary disorder is a metabolic acidosis with some compensation from the respiratory system trying to return the pH towards a normal value. You can look up the causes of metabolic and respiratory acidosis or alkalosis in a textbook or online and use this along with your history and examination to make a diagnosis. Practice interpreting arterial blood gases regularly and you'll soon start finding them easy. Don't hesitate to ask one of the senior medical, anaesthetic or intensive care team to help explain it to you if you're struggling. Thanks for downloading and listening to our podcasts. For more information, please go to www.ucl.ac.uk forward slash anaesthesia.